2024 has been great for uh, not only for sangro but also for the industry so in 2024 what we have achieved is what we have achieved in last 8 uh, to 9 years the this residential market was doing somewhere around maybe 1 lakh 2 lakh inverters overall in the market mm-hmm. in india market and now this year we are expecting and projecting that it should be somewhere near about maybe 8 lakh to 10 lakh inverters so okay. you can see the jump in the numbers after this scheme was launched now trend has changed earlier yes module was the major contributor in any of the solar plant mm-hmm. but in overall plant if you are talking about then there has been a major contributor inverter is one of the major contributor in india this year we have created a dedicated team for the best there are two reasons why best market is growing in india so one is the this grid and stabilization which is happening because a lot of uh, on grid inverters are getting in place and that is where government see that best is one of the major thing Hi, uh, we have with us today Mr. Sunil Badesra. He is the country head for Sangro India. Sangro India, in case you didn't know, and that would be very odd, is one of the oldest and most established inverter firms in India. Not only is this a global number one, they have been leading in the Indian market also. Sangro also happens to be the only company which has actually set up a large manufacturing facility in India, and the current capacity is over 10 gigawatts. Sunil has been associated with the company for a very long time. First as the head of sales and now as the country head. Uh, welcome, Sunil. Uh, thank you. This interaction with Sour Energy. Thanks, Sunil. Sunil, it's been uh, great to have you here. Uh, very simple question to start with: How has the year been for you in a record-breaking year as compared to 2023? Yeah, so 2024 has been great for uh, not only for Sangro but also for the industry. So in 2024, what we have achieved is what we have achieved in last uh, eight to nine years. So this year we are going to cross maybe more than 13 gigawatt, and uh, the cumulative figure for Sunco is now going to cross 33 gigawatt, and uh, soon I think it is going to have maybe more than 35 gigawatt within this month. Okay. So 2024, you can see the journey since starting. I think Jan Feb March was uh, doing very very good. There was a huge demand from the market, and. Uh, and i think it continued till october there was some slow down maybe couple of months was slow down but i think overall in 2024 it has been very good for the industry as well as for sun group okay and could you give us a break up by segments because i believe this has been a very interesting year in that sense also yeah so uh, overall what we are doing in uh, this year as i mentioned is 13 gigawatt so in this major contribution no doubt is from utility segment so i would say that 70% to 75% is from the utility segment what we are doing then coming to uh, the cndi segment which we are also leading and we are doing somewhere around maybe 15% of the total and 15 to 20% is from the cndi segment okay. and balance is from the residential segment okay so this year residential has been very good because of the the scheme which has been launched by the uh, honorable mm-hmm. prime minister so we see a very good uh, demand expecting in the coming uh, years also for the same so this is the how the break up has been for sangro in this uh, 2024 so you spoke about the pm surekar scheme so uh, has it expanded the market for example when people take it for residential does it is it does it also mean they understand better about solar and it helps to expand the broader market yeah so what was happening initial days maybe if i talk about maybe last year or maybe earlier than that the this residential market was doing somewhere around maybe 1 lakh 2 lakh inverters overall in the market mm-hmm. in india market and now this year we are ex- expecting and projecting that it should be somewhere near about maybe 8 lakh to 10 lakh inverters so okay. you can see the jump in the numbers after this scheme was launched and we are continuously focusing on this market this year only we have started our major focus on the residential segment and the we see that this market is going to be very very big in the coming okay. days on the manufacturing side tell us yeah, what else so, are you doing so in the manufacturing front uh, as we know this market is growing so we are also getting prepared on the back end side so currently our factory capacity is 10 gigawatt but we are doing with a single shift and now uh, we are coming up with new factory which have, which is going to have around 25 gigawatt of the manufacturing okay. capacity plus this 10 gigawatt we are going to com- continue for next 2 to 3 years and we are we are just going to watch like how this market goes and based on that we are taking some extra space in the new factory so it can be extended up to 50 gigawatt also okay. it's all based on the requirement of the market and this is uh, well needed because sangro was the first company when put up the mm-hmm. setup for change company who has put up the setup in india starting mm-hmm. with 3 gigawatt then 10 gigawatt mm-hmm. and now again we are the first one 
who are making it so big that 25 gigawatt because we see that market is going to have maybe 40 to 50 gigawatt of the market so we are just preparing ourselves for that and this will also serve the surrounding regions no this no? india factory is uh, we are planning right now only for the indian business but okay. yes we are keeping the provisions to support nearby countries or okay. maybe for some europe and us market as well for the future Great. yeah so We've seen the market expand hugely this year in terms of the final numbers. You just said it's going to be close to 30 gigawatts in yeah, terms of total installations. 35 gigawatts, yeah, maybe accumulated huge. for SunGrow. Yeah. So, what worked for the market other than, say, PM Suregar? And do you think there could be other measures which will sustain this kind of growth? A, is it such, uh, sustainable? <coughs> and what more could be done to ensure that capacity additions continue at a good pace? So, the major uh, drive for the push which is happening in this segment is majorly from the utility side because uh, there has been some target set by the government where they are targeting that by 2030 we have to achieve some 300 gigawatt so that is one of the major push why all the uh, people in the industry are working in the same direction there is, has been a support from the like all government PSUs also they are working in this direction and we see a lot of things are going to have uh, like contribute more mm -hmm. in this industry, especially the push which is coming in this industry. Yeah. Okay. So Sangro is the clear market leader now in India. Considering that, do you do you see the need or enough awareness of inverters per se, or do you think people are still very focused on modules? How do you think see that uh, evolving? I think now trend has changed. Earlier, yes, module was the major contributor in any of the solar plant, mm -hmm. but. These days, maybe from last few years, if you'll see, there has been some technology advancement which has been done, especially in overall plant, if you are talking about, then there has been a major contributor, inverter is one of the major contributor, and it is not just helping the customer in terms of technology perspective, but overall the cost advantage okay. is not just by the modules, it is also by the inverter, how designing is happening, what kind of sure. block size you are making. So all these things are generally helped by the inverter suppliers. Okay. So we've seen module prices have come down a lot in 2024, at yeah. least globally and a little bit in India. Mm -hmm. Is that pressure there for inverters also to bring down prices? Has that happened? So inverters, <coughs> in terms of cost perspective, may not be contributing more than 5 to 6 percent on the overall plant cost. But yes, in terms of optimization in the BOS, balance of system, is uh, one of the major contributors. Mm -hmm. So in terms of cost, if I'll say that uh, not much. Uh, there has been not much cost pressure on the inverter front, but yes, India is a very competitive market. So, every EPC company or IPP, they always expect to get some advantage sure. from each and every component which is part of the solar plant project. Mm -hmm. But we believe that uh, <coughs> inverter majorly contribute on the BOS front. It's not just the individual unit cost price which contribute to this industry. It's majorly the cost advantage what you're getting in other components mm -hmm. which are part of the solar plant. So, in the rooftop segment, as you get more and more retail customers now, I think you also find that we have seen globally, there are mm -hmm. companies like European firms, mm -hmm. American firms, mm -hmm. which are at almost 2x, 2.5x mm -hmm. the rate from uh, China-based manufacturers. Mm -hmm. Does that mean, is that the power of branding and do you see a ro role for branding to play there or do you think it's just about price even today? Are you able to charge a premium, for example, as the number one player in the market? So, India is a very price sensitive market right. the competitiveness is always there but it's a very price oriented market when you're going to the residential segment the customer expect immediate services and they expect that the model whatever they are getting the company which with whom they are dealing they should be number one and should provide the cheapest inverter in the market sure. so this is the expectation from consumer okay. perspective but yes we are uh, keeping ourselves in a segment where we can provide some good quality product along with the long term reliability. I will not say that we are very higher in the cost, but yes, we will not uh, definitely the cheapest in the market. So we are maintaining ourselves in between, okay. which can meet the customer demand in terms of pricing as well as in terms of quality and reliability. So overall brand awareness, gradually we are creating, especially this is going to have more impact in the residential segment. So we see that over a period of time, brand awareness will increase and we are focusing in that direction also, which can tell customer that why SunGro is more reliable than sure. like other players which are there in the market. So as a, as a company with by far the largest <coughs> installed base in India, when it comes to inverters, 
How important is customer service today? Do you mm. see that role evolving and does that give you an advantage in mm. case you have a larger team in place? How does that work for you in the market? So uh, what is happening in, uh, it's almost like 10 years for SunGrow in sure. India market and uh, there has been times where many inverter companies has gone out of this market. So it, uh, you will find maybe one or two companies who has been surviving in this India market for so long time and the major reason is the service. Uh, no doubt the product is also very important but if very good quality product you give in the market but service is not there you can't survive for a long sure. time that especially for the 10 years mm -hmm. with such huge capacity it's not mm -hmm. going to be practically possible sure so our major focus is these days also we are as we are growing uh, every year we our major focus is to do the expansion in the service segment so we are creating more and more service department within the service also we are creating mm -hmm. multiple departments so that we can have more focus on the service front because if service is there, I feel that Sangro brand name is already there. So major requirement is that customer uh, like appreciate on the service and just will get the routine business. So that is the major area where we are focusing on the service right now. So related to service and this is just for customers actually mm -hmm. who are considering solar or who have bought solar. Mm -hmm. It's would it be fair to say that typically inverters are very trouble free and if mm -hmm. at all, I think your experience would be interesting there. Most problems are solved remotely. Is that the case? So in terms of Indian EPC work, I would say, mm -hmm. uh, when we are talking about the cost uh, thing in when any plant is going to get commissioned, so people are a bit more conservative when they are talking on the this quality front. So they just try to save each and every penny wherever right. they can save and there mm -hmm. has been some quality compromise also sometime in the EPC work. So these challenges indirectly come to all the OEM manufacturers. Mm -hmm. Like we are one of them who are supplying inverters, then module suppliers are also there, cables, there are ECDB, multiple components are there. So each and every we are more prone to these kind of failures. But yes, uh, like in especially in the residential segment, there are huge quantity as I am talking about 8 lakh, 9 lakh, 10 lakh inverters. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be easy to visit each and every residential sure. house to provide the services. Mm -hmm. So definitely we are working that we can provide remote support to the customers. And I think more or less, especially when this remote access is there, it is mm -hmm. practically possible to do the service support and the troubleshooting is can be easily done. And yes, as I mentioned that service is going to be more critical in India because chances Due to the quality work of EPC, so sometimes uh, we need to be yeah. more aggressive in the providing the services. Okay. Yeah. One of the trends we saw this year was that almost, I believe, 25% of the large tenders were for storage or mm -hmm. RTC or FDRE. Mm -hmm. uh, how does that create an opportunity for you? Because SunGrow has a strong storage uh, yeah. offering yeah. worldwide. Yeah. So SunGrow is globally number one in battery energy storage as well as in the PV inverter segment. And in India, this year we have created a dedicated team for the best. There are two reasons why best market is growing in India. So one is the this grid and stabilization which is happening because a lot of uh, on-grid inverters are getting in place. And grid in terms of uh, compliance is like it is more important to make the first the grid stable. And that is where government see that best is one of the major thing where uh, SVG is also working but in terms of long term reliability of the grid. So battery storage is going to play a major role and that mm -hmm. is the reason why major push is happening. Secondly, the price drop which has happened in last right. one year. So that has been another major contributor for uh, the increase in the business whatever has been uh, we have seen in recent sure. last six months in the best. And Sangro is well prepared for that. Yeah. Okay. You mentioned the price drop I wanted to ask you because we have seen in the last three or four tender results that the numbers have been surprising. Yeah. I mean, uh, are those viable numbers or as some skeptics have said, no, no, these are just companies trying to make an entry to the market. So they are bidding very aggressively. Where do you stand so, on that? Uh, in terms of the costing at which SunGro is operating, we see that these uh, uh, tariffs are a bit difficult, uh, but I'm not sure the numbers what these uh, developers or EPC companies has considered when they have uh, bid for these projects. Okay. Uh, but definitely the prices, the tariff what they have mm -hmm. given in this beads are very very aggressive as per me because maybe they are taking some strategic call so I'm not sure what are the calculation behind mm -hmm. those calculation but yes the tariffs at which they have got the tenders is very very aggressive. But would it be fair to say that they must be assuming that procurement starts probably at least 9 months from now or 1 year from now so 
looking at the long term trends is that a risk they have taken so all these are actually some projections what they are saying right. but it may go on in different direction also but okay. if uh, we know that in the past we have seen that module prices will go down but at the other side it went uh, up also okay. so industry can move any in any of the direction but yes they are considering some risk and mm-hmm. based on that they are bidding this and getting the tenders so definitely there are some risk involved so but this calculation i think developer can tell you better than uh, okay. us on that front so really you also handle bangladesh sri lanka yeah, yeah. Uh, nepal i yeah, believe correct. anything interesting happening in those markets so uh, i would say that initially this uh, sri lanka market was slow but mm-hmm. now i think it has picked up uh, in a big way okay and then coming to the bangladesh market due to recent disturbances again this market has slowed down but right. uh, just before this everything was in line right now nepal also we have seen that some big tenders are coming <coughs> so let's see how it goes but we are well prepared for all these markets okay so 2025 is almost here give us your three predictions for the year <coughs> three big things to expect in the market <coughs> so 2025 what i believe is major uh, two things especially related to this industry is going to happen one is in the residential segment mm-hmm. <coughs> the market is we are expecting that uh, the numbers which are happening right now maybe 8 lakh 10 lakh inverter that will go up to maybe 15 lakhs okay so this scheme is uh, <coughs> maybe going to give more boost to this industry and parallelly this battery energy storage due to this grid down stabilization i think pes is going to <coughs> overtake the pv inverter business maybe not uh, overtake but at least they these two business pes and pv uh, business will go together okay and hydrogen i see that things are moving but not sure uh, like pes was bit slower than hydrogen really slow mm-hmm. but uh, we were expecting that hydrogen will pick up more than uh, okay. this pes uh, but uh, it got white for vice versa actually best is has picked up but hydrogen is not going that's up. probably because best prices came down very sharply yes yeah. third is the segment where we are also exploring is the ev segment okay. we have some ev chargers also so okay. we are just exploring this market if it goes up definitely we have plans to launch okay. uh, the ev chargers also for that's this market and hybrid inverters as i mentioned again is part of the residential segment we have not lost so far because we are just watching the market because again that segment is very price sensitive market mm-hmm. and also the service expectation from customers are big more sure. uh, in terms of the mm-hmm. investment what they do so we are just working in that direction and we are hopeful that maybe in coming years we'll launch new and new products for this market great on that note yeah. best of luck for 2025 thank you i hope thank you have so a fantastic 2024 thank yeah. you yeah thank you